Hello, it's Jeff Sauer here, and I'm excited to share with you the reporting and dashboard checklist that we've put together on the Jefflytics blog. So if you're wondering what goes into a good report, how to make your reports useful, and if you want to have a checklist that you can follow along with and make sure every time you put out a dashboard, every time you deliver a report to your organization, or if you have somebody who's delivering reports to you, if you want to give them a guide to live by, a guide that they can use to make the reports they deliver to you even more useful, or you want to use it for yourself, you are going to want to check out this blog post and checklist that shows you exactly how to create a meaningful dashboard or report for your organization. So let's get into our reporting and dashboard checklist. Now when we announced our checklist project on the Jefflytics blog, we got a lot of comments, a lot of people asking for things, and the second most votes came in for our reporting and dashboard checklist. And so this is a dashboard and checklist that I'm really excited to deliver to you. But I have to be honest, this is a lot more difficult than I planned. Because there's a lot of nuance that goes into reporting, and it's something that takes days, even weeks, and sometimes months to deliver on a report, and everything's a little bit different. So I wanted to make sure that we were thorough here as much as possible, but also I didn't know if the checklist, if the responsibility was to teach you how the different technologies work, or if it was really more of the strategy piece. And so I had a lot of decision making to make. And that is that if I'm too strategy heavy, then you're not gonna know how to create a report. And if it's too technology heavy, then you'd be making choices without a strategy. And also, if it's too tech heavy, then it means that it's not universal for everybody. And so what I did is I compromised and I created the checklist that I wish I would have had during my years as an analyst. If I would have had this checklist by my side before I created any report or dashboard, I think the result would have been better. And it would have been really nice every single step of the way because I would consistently produce dashboards that were working really well for my organization and for my clients who I was running these reports and dashboards for. Now, why should we even care? Well, because reports and dashboards help us track progress towards our marketing goals and our KPIs. But developing a good report or dashboard is going to take you forever if you don't have your goals defined. So it all starts with defining your goals and understanding your business. And then after that, you can choose technology platforms. And finally, you can automate after that. So in this video, I want to go through the five keys to building an effective marketing report or KPI dashboard for your organization. And let's go through those five keys. The first key is to understand who is your reporting audience and what information are they seeking. You need to understand who you're sending this report to and what they want to see in order for your report to be effective. You need to locate and you need to organize the KPIs that you're going to put into your report in some kind of spreadsheet or some kind of safekeeping document where you know that these are the things that are important to your organization. The next step is to choose the platform where you're going to build your KPI dashboard. Next, you'll perform analysis. What does the data tell you and how will that influence your organization? And finally, and this comes way later in the process, you're going to want to look into automating your future report delivery and the analysis of what you see in these dashboards. So let's go through each of these keys step by step and talk about how it makes an effective marketing report or KPI dashboard. Section one, who is your reporting audience and what information are they seeking? The first thing you wanna ask here is you wanna say who will receive these reports or who's gonna have access to your KPI dashboard. It really is important to understand who's gonna be receiving these reports to make sure you think about their needs every step of the way. And with that, you wanna know that recipient, what is their primary marketing goal? What is their goal and how do you make sure you reflect that in your report? Not only that, but what are your objectives in delivering a report? And to round out this section, you want to identify the KPIs that need to be in your dashboard. So for example, if your sales and marketing team wanted a KPI dashboard or a marketing report, they might be looking at the following KPIs. Things like total sales, average order value, conversions. They might want to know conversion rates as well the percentage of people who saw your marketing and then those who converted into somebody who took the next step. And if you want to get really advanced, you'll start looking at things like conversion rates by product or conversion rates by category, conversion rates by demographics. You'll even get into things like customer lifetime value, the value of your leads, return on your ad spend, what's the all-in marketing return on investment, Salespeople are going to want to know things like sales close rates. There are hundreds of KPIs that you could go through that are important to your organization. And what you want to do in this section is define the KPIs that are really important to your stakeholders, the ones who are sponsoring you delivering this report in the first place. 
And so as you go through this video or as you go through the checklist available at jefflytics.com, make sure to write down your exact KPIs so you have them handy as you take the next steps in this checklist. But before we get to the next step, I want to give you a pro tip. Make sure the KPIs that you choose for reporting are relevant to your audience's primary goal and they support your reporting objectives. That's the key here. Make sure whatever you're reporting on really helps somebody achieve their goals. Because the whole point of analytics is to support marketing efforts. And if you can help people achieve their goals, they're going to think analytics is magic and analytics is working really well. If you're giving them things that are not important, they're going to check out pretty quickly. And you're going to be delivering a dashboard to nobody or it's going to be falling on deaf ears. Nobody's going to care about what you have to deliver because you're not satisfying those objectives. The next thing you want to do is locate and organize the KPIs for your report in the systems you have available to you. And this really comes down to identifying the source of data for each KPI in your dashboard. And so while you're writing things down and you're going through this checklist, what I want you to do is to write down where you can find the KPIs that you've chosen. My organization's KPIs can be found in the following systems. So for example, if you put total sales, you might choose your sales database or your e-commerce platform or even your Google Analytics account to figure out your total sales. If you want to get your total return on ad spend, you're going to need to get ad spend from your advertising platform, and then the return number, it's going to come from your sales database. And so don't be shy in writing down your organization's KPIs and in which systems you can find them in. Trust me, this will be really important because when you're creating your dashboard, the last thing you want to do is to be scrambling around trying to find out if you have that data or not or where you can find the data because if you don't have that data available and you're not measuring it right now, it's going to be impossible to create a useful dashboard. So write it down, make sure you know where everything is, and then the next step is to pull it all together into your marketing dashboard. And while you're pulling things together, the question you want to answer is, which platform will you use to build your KPI dashboard? Now, there are many tools and software suites that are out there that are capable of building your dashboards. And in the past, I've used almost all of them. I've used the following tools to build dashboards out. Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, ASP.NET, Tableau, Scyph, Clipfolio, Google Charts, and really, I've used two or three times more tools than this, but I just wanted to talk about the ones that I use primarily for reporting. But now, my current recommendation is Google Data Studio. So I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to make the technology selection piece easy for you. Google Data Studio is pretty amazing. It's free, and it hooks into all kinds of different third-party services if you want to bring them into a dashboard using either the native Google connectors or using Supermetrics, which connects you to a lot of different systems as well. And so if you want to, you can pull most of your marketing data into Google Data Studio using the awesome tools that are available for free from Google or the paid tools from Supermetrics. Now, I don't want to influence you too much on which technology you choose, but this is the technology that I use, and there's a lot of reasons why I think this is the right technology for you as well if you haven't chosen a technology yet. Now, if you've already chosen a technology and you're happy with it, then more power to you, continue to use the technology that works for you, and then follow the rest of this checklist to make sure that you are analyzing the data you collect and ensuring that it's truly useful. And that brings me to our next section. What does the data tell you and how will that influence your organization? Start by answering the question, is this report truly useful and what value does it bring to your organization? And if you want to get ahead of this, be honest with yourself and ask yourself the following questions about each report or dashboard that you create. Number one, does this report provide valuable information to your audience? Is the information in your dashboard cohesive and easy to understand? Does my report show my audience what their efforts or the efforts of others in the organization are accomplishing? What is the most logical conclusion I can draw from the data in the report? Can my audience use the information in this report and in my analysis to take action? And finally, what action do you hope to inspire that others take based on the information in your reporting dashboard? And our final section is all about automating future report delivery and analysis. Now, automation is something that people usually jump into too fast because they think that they're going to save themselves a bunch of time by automating redundant tasks or they're going to save themselves time because they're going to just automate away dashboards. And I'm here to tell you that automating too early is going to take more time than not automating at all. Yes, it's painful to do things manually. Yes, none of us fancy ourselves as data manipulators or somebody who's pulling data manually. 
but I will tell you that you have to do it manually once, twice, maybe even 10 times before you can really get a grip on automation opportunities, before you can really tell if your report's useful, because I see no point in automating something that's completely useless. So you want to identify automation opportunities for your report and your dashboard. Now I've taken the liberty of preparing some areas where you might want to automate and some ideas as to where and when you might get started. The first one is data collection and this is the easiest. Collecting data is something that is very easy to do with different connectors and different reporting tools. Anything from pulling data into an Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets using connectors to Google Analytics to creating a Google Data Studio dashboard or building something out in a robust tool like Tableau or any other type of enterprise reporting software, you should be able to automate data collection for all these. Data collection is something that is very easy to do now and there are many tools out there and it's very saturated for collecting the data. And with it, they should be able to help you do some kind of data cleaning and data formatting as well. And so when you're pulling data from the Google Analytics API, if you don't like all the data that's coming out, or if you think there's spam in your reports, or you want to look at different segments of your data, you can do this automatically with the Google Analytics API by using filters and applying your segments. And so if you're doing this in Google Data Studio or any other tool out there, like Supermetrics or Clipfolio, anything that accesses the Google Analytics API, you can apply data cleaning and formatting as you pull the data out of the API. And that can really save you a lot of time in the long run. Chart generation is also something that you can automate. And in fact, if you're not automating chart generation, then I really feel sorry for you because charts are very easy to automate now, whether using the Google Charts API, using Google Data Studio, or any other number of tools that are out there. If you can access the data, you can collect it, you should be able to create a chart from it as well. You can also automate your date comparisons when you think about it. You can say, hey, I want to look at this thing from this month compared to last month, or I want to look at this thing year over year. You can do that within your API calls, within Google Data Studio. There's all different kinds of ways that you can automate your date comparisons. Now, if you're not sure about any of these things yet, or if you think that this is not tactical enough where we're not looking at the tools like Google Data Studio, then you definitely want to check out our other videos about Google Data Studio because we have created automated dashboards using multiple different systems inside of Google Data Studio. We've created SEO dashboards, and we have a whole class on Google Data Studio that you are not gonna wanna miss. And so if you wanna learn more about Google Data Studio and how to really automate creating your dashboards and your reports, make sure you check out our Google Data Studio class as well. You can automate the sharing of insights, and this can come down to just adding a row to your reports and telling people what you see, what the insights are, what the observations are, and what the implications are on the business. You can even automate report delivery by making sure the right people receive the right message at the right time. And this can come down to creating a recipient list for your reports, maybe a mailing list within your organization, or it can come down to making sure you get a report at the beginning of each month that you can analyze, provide insights, and then deliver to your team in a timely basis. And the final thing that you might want to consider automating, and this one's really hard, is the analysis part. It is very hard to automate analysis. Now we have tools out there like Quill and Gage that will give you some kind of analysis, but it's not quite to par with the human brain and what we can analyze ourselves. And so I would say the final frontier of automation for you is gonna be the analysis piece. So you can get very far with automating just about everything else with Google Data Studio, but the analysis piece, that's really the part where you wanna spend most of your time. So my recommendation to you would be to really understand your business. What does your business find to be useful? Deliver something useful as a proof of concept and then start to automate it. And then once you have your automation in place, once you start delivering this thing on a consistent basis, you can spend more of your time on analysis, more of your time bringing insights to your organization that will propel you forward and help your business grow more customers in the future, grow more value overall and when that happens, help your company grow to the point where marketing has a very strong return on investment. So to summarize the five keys to building an effective marketing report or KPI dashboard, number one, you want to understand who is in your reporting audience and what information they're seeking. Number two, locate and organize the KPIs for your report in a spreadsheet. Number three, choose a platform where you're going to build your KPI dashboard. Number four, perform an honest analysis. What does the data tell you and how will that influence your organization? And number five, automate future report delivery and the analysis using these automation techniques that we've taught you here and that we're gonna teach you inside our Google Data Studio class as well. And finally, I wanna hear from you. Where are you at in your reporting process? 
leave a comment and let me know where you're at with your reporting, what you've automated, and where you have struggles, and we will make sure that we improve our checklist based on any suggestions you leave in the comments on this video.